youtube.com slash mayhew mayhem that's youtube.com slash m-a-y-h-e-w-m-a-y-h-e-m Hello and welcome to another episode of 30 Minutes of Mayhem. I am your host, my name is Michael Mayhew, and I am here with my co-hosts. What's up everybody, it's me, Greg. Once again, we are joined by the man who thought catching them all was referring to STDs. Nick from YouTube.com slash Tic Tac Man, and fuck you, Greg, it was only two. <laughs> and joining us is the man who gave me one of those, our intern, Emmanuel. Hey everybody. And as I said, welcome to 30 Minutes of Mayhem, the podcast your mother can be ashamed of. And tell me, Nick, why is this the podcast your mother can be ashamed of? Because I take lumps of plastic and glue them to each other and then coat them with thinner layers of plastic, and I call it my hobby. That is exactly correct. I almost said that is exactly pathetic instead of correct. Um, uh, I mean, you should have. <laughs> I just said almost. You want, you want another take on that? That is exactly <laughs> pathetic. <laughs> Greg, in the previous episode, just like many previous episodes, we were talking about who wants to punch Greg's V-card. Coming up after this commercial break, I feel like I got a great scenario for you that has to do with that. But speaking of who wants to punch Greg's V-card, if you want to enter, email us, 30 minutes of mayhem at gmail.com. You can also tweet at us on Twitter, 30 M-I-N-S of Mayhem on Twitter. Yeah, so if you want to enter that, we are still taking submissions. We are still taking applications. If you will, you don't necessarily need a resume. We just need to have a brief conversation. We will figure it out. There is going to be a game show in the future, hopefully. With all that being said, let's take a quick commercial break. This is your brain. This is your brain on drugs. This is Greg. Hi. Greg, are you a virgin? Yes. This is Greg in 30 Minutes of Mayhem Apparel. Tell me, Greg, are you still a virgin? <laughs> Yes. Then I don't know what your fucking problem is. Because 30 minutes of mayhem has gotten me laid. If you want to help get Greg laid, email us 30 minutes of mayhem at gmail.com. Hashtag take Greg's V card. Or if you want my face on your body, head over to mayhumayhem.spreadshirt.com. Unlike me, maybe a 30 minutes of mayhem shirt will have others saturated by your sweet succulents. I doubt that. So our first topic for this episode, Greg, I I feel like this may be one perfectly for you. It's a question I saw online in some sort of meme or something of that nature I don't exactly remember. If you had an inch of your dad's dick in your ass and an inch of your dick in your mom's vagina, would you rather move forward or backwards to get out? Hmm. Damn. Well, I mean, I, shit. I respect my dad too much to, uh, you know... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Um, Ride his cock. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so basically, I think I, I would, um, as much as I hate to say it and hate to think it, I would probably move forward. You would just plunge yourself balls deep into your mom. Yeah. I, I like to think of it as returning from whence I came. <laughs> Only to come again. Yeah, I was going to say. The second coming, if you will. <laughs> I think Jesus would be proud. <laughs> if Jesus was in this scenario, he he would have been taking his mom's V card. So if you want to be Greg's Jesus, email us 30 minutes of mayhem at gmail.com. He just says, bless you, my son, and hands me a napkin so I can wipe my dick off. <laughs> oh, my God. So, Greg, going back to what we've talked about in previous episodes, you're really concerned about busting super quick. So if that's the case in this situation and, you, and you've got an inch of your dick in your mom's vagina and you're thrusting yourself balls deeper, are you afraid that you're not going to just paint her uterus? I mean, even if I did, she's like in her 60s now. So, I mean, it doesn't really matter anything that's going to happen. What if it does? Okay, if something does happen, then we're going to have to call, like, the fucking Vatican because that is, like, some serious, like, goddamn, like, <laughs> miracle shit. Mr. Pope, Mr. Pope, I just made an incest baby. It's a miracle. <laughs> and then just looking at the eye and says, abort it. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> this will be the one time I will allow you to abort the fetus. He uh, gets plane tickets for Greg and his mom to come over to the Vatican, and they're up on that window that they that he stands at, and he talks to all the people, and then he really quick loops a noose around Greg's neck and pushes him off, and that's where Greg actually ends up hang gliding. <laughs> Across the Vatican Square, he's just fucking terrorizing all the folks below, and then... The... He holds his mom's arms behind her head, and bishops just come by and just punch that stomach. <laughs> yeah, and then he takes a super hard stance on Catholicism, and then he starts talking about Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, and you're like, that doesn't even make sense to this <laughs> in context here, and he's like, you know, you don't lie with your mother, and Greg, meanwhile, gets caught in this weird vortex and just whipped into the fucking crowd of people. And yeah, so, you know, there's that. I mean, you'll get to meet the Pope if you cream pie your mom, possibly. Is that like a life I mean, goal? I, that's like a life goal no. for anyone that's brought up Catholic, right? Is to meet the Pope? Yeah, but I mean, I'm I'm not anymore. So, I mean, I really, I honestly couldn't give, I could give a fuck less. You could give a fuck less? Yeah. What about one fuck with your mother to meet the Pope? Would you give that? <laughs> I mean, probably, I mean, wait. I'm really getting long. a little confused. He's like, I'm getting so confused because I figured out that Freud is correct. Um, ah. This mind-blown type of Everybody's situation. obsessed with dicks and wanting to fuck their mother. No, I'm pretty sure that's you, Freud. No, no, it's everybody. Well, in this case, you just said that you would go balls deep into your mother. I didn't say balls deep. I said I would move forward. I mean, for me, just moving that one inch forward puts it at my balls. So, <laughs> so uh, somebody, somebody else jump in here and answer this question. If you had an inch of your dad's dick in your ass and an inch of your dick in your mom's vagina, would you rather move forwards or backwards to get out? I'd back it up for two reasons. One, because I got a nasty polyp and it just having that relief of having it pushed up inside of me. Oh, man, it's, there's like a foot in the door all the time. And whenever that's up in there, man, locked tight. And second, I just want to have that close connection with my father. But, Nick, your father's dead. I know, so this one's super easy. I just get an ashy ass. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. So, Emmanuel, what do you think here? I think I'd rather just back it up real quick than uh, go in there, just because I don't have to look at my father in the eyes while that's happening. I would slide sideways because I don't have enough dick to go any farther in, so I would just be able to slide sideways and get out of the situation. Zero friction. I would just take one step to the side, and my dick would pop out, and that would be the end of that situation. It's the first time that there's ever a situation in which having a small dick is a plus. Uh, and the only time, and this is only a hypothetical. Yes, yes. Clark. So congratulations, you played yourself. My dad's dead. (laughs) You ever been watching Bukaki porn and want to hear something other than the guys groaning as they burst on the girl's face? Well, I have the solution for you. 30 Minutes of Mayhem gives you an enjoyable listening experience, and it's easily accessible on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, and Spreaker. While watching a girl getting bathed in and gargle gallons of guy goo. 30 Minutes of Mayhem, the podcast your mother can be ashamed of. This is Nostalgia Bomb. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Nostalgia Bomb. We are on episode 98, which means that today we will be talking about Pokemon. Specifically, we'll be talking about both the games and the show and, you know, just everything about it, the franchise as a whole. So let's get started, guys. I have masturbated multiple times to Misty Cosplays. Yep. Yep, yep. Same here. I think yep. let's let's just get that part out of the way. Let's 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 just get uh, get that part out of the way. Like, how, how many how many people have like just in this podcast have done that? Like just 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 jacked one off to us uh, to a, like a babe dressed as Misty. Yep. 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 I think everybody. I think I, I, okay. Meeting adjourned. Everybody. We we all did. Okay. Not even cosplay. Just went straight for the original source material. <laughs> 
<laughs> I did that as well, but uh, we're not. Uh, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> All of the Pokemon female leads. Oh um, yeah, you know what? That that is one thing about about the uh, the games and everything, especially. Oh my god, especially with uh, the most recent one, Sun and Moon. Like god damn that. And I'm just talking about this week. Games. Yeah, my so- dick be dripping now. I remember my friend who uh, introduced me to it back and I was like fucking fifth grade or whatever. Like it was a big thing. And like I was outside of that, that bubble of people. He introduced me to it and I was like, man, this shit is G-A-Y. And then I started to like get more into it because like everybody was into it. So it was like one of those things to where like literally everyone is talking about this. Then you had the kids that like purposefully like didn't get into it. So then they eventually became like hipsters. Because that they were purposefully oh, God, not yeah. they were purposefully not getting into it because everyone was too running. mainstream for me, man. Yeah, you know, eventually I got into it and I actually was heavily into the cards. At first, it started with like collecting the cards and watching the TV show. Then I remember, God, I was in sixth grade, I think it was like the following year, might have been seventh grade. I remember I had a Charizard. Nice. And it was like when the the original run of them and oh the card oh man yeah. yes yeah so it was like in the original run and i just happened to i i just bought this random fucking pack at a goddamn flea market and it had a fuck charizard in it and no one no one like holy shit no one believed me that i just yeah, got those this were one. super rare i was like no I'm, I'm dead serious like i just bought this packet like i bought a few packs at this fucking flea market and i just got a fucking charizard like I had like the starter pack thing that you get, blah, blah, blah. Got that and like no one believed. So I was like, man, fuck, fuck these people. I'm like, I'm not lying. I'm telling the truth. So I brought my like trapper keeper thing in mm-hmm. that I that I kept them in. Showed people and they were like, oh shit, dude's not lying. Like he's for real. It was like the only person got this Charizard. And somebody stole my shit that day. Stole my whole oh, yeah. entire uh, fucking you made card the collection. Mistake of sh- you made the mistake of showing a bunch of fifth graders that you actually had something super rare. You never make that mistake because, well, obviously, like, as you found out, those motherfuckers will steal it. It was actually like six or uh, six or seventh grade. Like I said, it was Whatever, like a year, you know a year what or so I mean. later. You don't, you don't show kids that age. Like it doesn't matter if they call you a liar or not. You don't show them that sort of thing because they are going to jack your shit, man. And as it turns out, they did. Right. Well, this is a, this is a lesson that you don't know at that point in time. Yeah, you know, yeah. You'll, yeah, you'll learn it now. So, yes, I I understand that. And when you said Jack your shit, Nick got excited. I heard it in his voice. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever he said there's something, or he's like, you showed those kids something you shouldn't. I was like, yeah, I do that all the time. <laughs> 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 you 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 want to you want to see my Bulbasaur? <laughs> I nickname him Syphilis because that's what's on my dick. <sighs> so yeah, that happened, and the thing that I was most upset about—well, uh, I mean, aside from if you've ever had things stolen from you before, it's not a pleasant feeling. Aside from that, the thing that I was really most upset about was the Trapper Keeper thing that uh, I kept it in because I had had that shit since I was like first grade with it. So like I mm. purposely wasn't using it for school anymore, and uh, it was this Pittsburgh Steelers like Trapper Keeper thing that I—I oh. I, I was like, it was really nice, and I, I was uh, like liked it a lot. So. That's why I kept my cards in because I didn't use it for school. And then I, I brought it to school that one time and somebody straight up stole my shit. And I was more upset about the, but the trapper than the cards. But uh, that was where uh, my trust in uh, humanity ended was at that I point. I don't blame in time. you, man. I mean, Rightfully, that, maybe so. that was something you had since you were a little kid. So, I mean, it had like special sentimental value to you. And Yeah, I think the, the part about it is like, you know, for a fact that like that kid, the chances that kid actually have been uh, had been a Steeler fan is basically Nick because I was in Florida at this point in time. Yeah, you were in Florida. So, so I mean, they probably took the card sleeves out of the trapper and probably just literally just filed that shit in the trash. If whoever did that to me happens to hear this episode, I hope you literally die a painful death, like cancerous death or AIDS because you, you deserve exactly that. I mean, so, you don't do that. I don't give a shit how old you are. You just don't go around and fucking jack somebody's shit, man. That is, that's just fucked. I pay people to come jack my shit. Okay, we're not talking about that jack, you know, jacking shit, okay, Nick? Oh, so, okay. speaking of paying people to jack your shit, if you were to go to, like, a massage parlor and you get a massage with a happy ending, is that cheating? 
Yeah, because oh. you're still engaging in some sort of like sexual relation with another person. You know, I, I, I defer to the Japanese on this one more. Hand service parlors aren't really considered much of anything except, you know, just some hand service. It's a service you're paying for. It's a little bit of additional. It's just a different type of massage. I have one scheduled for Saturday. Greg, would you get uh, a happy ending massage? Well, yeah, I would, but that's only because, you know, I don't have a fucking, like, significant other, so I'm I'm in the clear. I requested a doubles room. I'm the only one going. <laughs> oh, God. Hopefully Brad is ready. <laughs> they said he's the only one who can give a really good deep tissue. <laughs> I wouldn't do it personally, regardless of whether I was in a relationship or not. But Greg, you obviously would. Let him touch your squirtle. Yep. There's that. So anyway, the card aspect of it in the TV show were, were my favorite parts. I liked the idea of the trading card game, and I tried to get into it, but maybe it's just my undiagnosed at the time ADD, but I just couldn't like get a grasp on how to properly play it. So I never really went really hardcore into playing a card game. I had the games though. I got first three they put out. Like I had Pokemon Red and then I had Pokemon Gold and then Pokemon Sapphire. But for whatever reason, I stopped playing after that for like a long ass time. I always liked the idea of Pokemon. Like it, it was, such a cool concept the idea of training and battling monsters and collecting them and that it was just there was something about it that was innately like really unique i like, just do it with children like just gather them <laughs> up and throw them in a pit and fight it out like it was it was one of those things where it's like nobody else had really done a game like that before and it was like this really neat idea that I thought it was cool, and one of my crowning achievements. And if I had, if I can get a Game Boy printer, because I make sure the battery is still alive in my fucking cartridge. My yellow, I collected all 151, like legit. Oh damn, nice! And when you get to, when you do that, you go to the top of this one tower, and they're like, if you've got the Game Boy printer, you can print out a certificate of completion. Like I would put that shit on my resume. You guys remember Pokemon Snap? Yeah. The one spinoff. Oh my yeah, god, that game you was take amazing. Shit to Blockbuster. Yeah. Yes, when you could, yeah. yeah, you could take all the pictures and then you could take them to Blockbuster and then print them out, the pictures out as stickers. Oh my god, I did that so many times because I just, I thought that was so cool. It's like, oh my god, I could like take pictures in the game and have them like made into actual like real things in real life. And I mean, just the game itself was fun. Who the hell knew that a game that consisted of you going around taking pictures of Pokemon would be as much fun as that game was? Did you ever get into Pokemon Go? Surprisingly enough, no, I didn't. I mean, I, I, I thought it was a really cool idea, and I wanted to, but I was just a little disappointed that when it first came out, they were only doing the Gen 1 Pokemon, because there were a lot of other Pokemon from some of the later uh, generations that I really liked and wanted to see in the game. Uh, Pokemon is definitely my first anime I ever watched. I think it was I for got, a lot of people. Yeah, I got super obsessed with it. Uh, from some kid at church who had like Pokemon cards and shit. Oh, the devil, the devil I gonna, the card. I was gonna say he's in is. he's in hell now, right? <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not. I went uh, four years later, still like part of kind of the same church group, just moving around the church locations. Sounds like a cult. It wasn't. I had Yu-Gi-Oh cards during this time period, and like literally mm. one of my friend's fathers grabbed my deck out of my hand, quickly like rifled through to all of my cards. He looked at them and they said. Demon cards. He firmly just like kind of like just threw them back in my hand, kinda, and then just like walked away. And I was just like, Oh uh, my god. Yeah, that reminded me of the whole satanic panic about Pokemon. All those like holy roller types were talking about how Pokemon was evil because they had like psychic type Pokemon and shit like that. And yeah, oh my god, I remember. Greg, Greg, can I just interject for a second? Because I think we need to get a band and get like a female pop singer, but heavy metal music, satanic panic. <laughs> oh man i think we can do it one of the other things that i really liked about pokemon that like i didn't really like discover until much later in my life was um it was the, the main appeal like when you see it as a kid and i mean even now like that i'm older like one of the main things that appeals to me about pokemon is that you know, the Pokemon are just so goddamn adorable. Like, there are just so many freaking Pokemon that are... Like, I mean, every kid 
wanted like a, a pet Pikachu or something like that. Like they wanted to have like their own Pokemon that like they could have like go on adventures with and stuff like that. But at the same time, there are a lot of Pokemon who like if you look at their Pokedex entries and stuff, there's a lot of fucked up shit that they have going on in the Pokemon world. Like I mean like really like especially most of the ghost type and psychic type Pokemon. There's some descriptions in the Pokedex for them that are like really really messed up. Like a uh, Driftloon, which is a Pokemon that looks like a balloon like in one of the games <laughs> like it literally No, no, no. Get this. In one of the games, the ice one cream of, one. It's the, the most po- terrifying one of them all. You're just <laughs> looking ice cream and then all of a sudden it's like ah, come well, on, no, get the fuck seriously, off of me. seriously just google what drift loon looks like and you look at it it's like oh it's adorable and then you like read the the description for it in the pokedex and it says drift loon likes to lure children and to uh like take them away into the forest and it's like oh that's that's a little less adorable and then what, another what version there what was that, Greg? <laughs> I want to be the very best. <laughs> and then another version of the same game says that if you accidentally pop a drift loon, its soul spills out screaming. Or one thing I at least need to talk about, and I've been thinking about the entire time that we've been talking about this, is I need to try to convince my significant other to do a Misty cosplay and then touch my pee-pee. All right, everyone. We just finished talking about Pokemon and the impact it had on our lives. What about you, the listener? Did it have an impact on your life? Write it down in the comments and let us know. Once again, this was Nostalgia Bomb, everybody. We'll see you again next time. And we'll be back to 30 Minutes of Mayhem after this commercial break. In the arms of an angel. Hi, I'm Michael Mayhew. Will you be the donor for a struggling podcast? Every day podcasts are recorded, edited, and uploaded and require your help. Please click the link in the description to donate to 30 Minutes of Mayhem or a small amount via PayPal using 30 Minutes of Mayhem at gmail.com. You'll help rescue yourself from boredom and us from poverty and provide software, microphones, server space, and love. Donate in the next 30 minutes and you will receive an email confirming your donation. And you'll know that you've given this podcast a second chance thanks to you. Your donation says we're here to stay. Please donate right now. Golden showers. I'm just gonna cut to the fucking chick. No setup, no bullshit. Golden showers. Greg, you know, you're trying to lose this V-card. What if the chick that you're trying to lose this V-card to, she's like, yeah, dude, I'll totally fuck you, but first, you gotta pee on me. I was afraid you were gonna ask if uh, that, uh, she would only fuck me if uh, I let her pee on me. Oh, God, yeah, that would that would have been gross. Well, I mean, I, I'd still be kind of grossed out. It's like, uh... Especially if it's, like, in a shower, because it, it doesn't... Yeah. It's pretty much just warm water at that point. Yeah, I mean, it, it's... I mean, it probably wouldn't be that big a deal if it was, like, in a shower, but, like, outside, it would just be like, uh, I, I, I really don't want to uh do that i mean i especially don't want it to get everywhere because i mean yeah it'll a lot of it'll get on you but i mean a lot of it also probably you know get on the floor and stuff and especially if we're like at my place uh i i really I don't want to clean that up um i mean that, that's the issue with going super soaker on that chest that shit just drifts on past them yeah but- i don't know i mean i don't think i would go through with that just because it's like no i uh i i, I don't know i mean it's I mean, if she was asking me, that's that's kind of a tough one. I mean, I don't want to be like, I don't know. I mean, because Greg, the she's, time, she's, though, I mean, she's there this- and she's posted up like a bird feeder on her knees, got her head tilted back, her mouth wide open, <laughs> and she's saying, pee pee in my mouth hole. <laughs> do you do it? I don't know if I could. I don't know. I, I literally, because see, here's the thing. I have, ex- I, like, I have bladder shyness. Like, I literally cannot pee if somebody else can see me. Like, uh, because, like, no matter how hard I've tried before, like, if I, ha- like, when we were camping and I would have to go to the bathroom, mm-hmm. I, I, like, I, I just couldn't do it. Like, I would just be like, well, fuck it. I guess I'll just hold it till morning when they, uh, when they put the bathhouse back up so I can take a leak. Like, I just, I, I couldn't, I, I can't do it. Like, if I feel like somebody could see me, I just, can't, I just can't do it. So, no, I don't think I could actually do it like like not just because i don't want to but also because i i don't think i physically could so i don't think it would actually work like i i I don't think i could actually do it if r kelly can do it why can't i huh that's what i think 
Because R. Kelly's an asshole. And Nick, I'm an asshole. I was going like to say, R. Kelly. No, that's true. Nick's also an asshole. Uh, so, Greg, if she wants to if she wants to pee on you, she's like, look, anything you want to do, it's fucking on the table. Anytime you want, I'm at your beck and call. You'll never have to jerk off ever again. I will come over at any time and help you come over. And, just, just give me pee pee from my mouth hole. And, but no, now this time... Instead of you peeing in her mouth hole, she just wants to pee on you. I guess I would let that happen if, uh, like, if it meant like being able to do anything. I mean, I guess, she wants to I just it... she wants to Jimmy Neutron slick your hair back with her urine. <laughs> I mean, as long as I close my eyes and try not, not... to think about it too hard, I nope, uh, you got to imagine you... Robert Kelly peeing on you. You got you got to <laughs> maintain eye contact with her, and she's gonna pee directly into your eye sockets. Jesus Christ. Oh my god. I don't know if I could go through with that then. Like that's just too fucked up even for me. Like that that that's just like crossing a line. I don't think I I, I want to cross because I'm I'm afraid of what I'll find on the other side. So you have crossed that line one too many times and let me tell you it gets harder to come back every time. It's just like your astro projection when you have those orgasms with the fucking fleshlight, Greg. One of these times you're not going to be able to come back. Oh. Yep, finding the ground. It's just, you're, you're just going to put your feet down and you're just going to keep floating and be like, oh, fuck. I, I picture it this way. You're sitting in this chair, right? And she's standing in front of you and like she's got one, one leg between your feet and then she's got like her left leg hiked up on the arm of the chair and she's directional peeing via her vagina into your face. What happens if she accidentally shits while she's peeing? Oh, God. God, then I, I'd immediately start vomiting, and then it, mash it up with it, your man tits. Yeah, it would just get like out of control really fast, because then I'd start vomiting, and then she'd probably start vomiting, and then it, it would just be like awful, like the smell, just everything. Oh my God, it, thinking about it makes me want to puke right now. Emmanuel, how do you feel about golden showers? Would you give and or receive a golden shower? Uh, I would possibly give if it was uh, probably contained, like. In an actual shower, I guess. Yeah, like like a lot of plastic too, just a plastic wrapped floor. Yeah, it's kind of gross. You, still. you know what's gross? Leaving your shit at other people's house. And I'm just saying, dude, like you've got like clothes here, and there's paperwork. Who the fuck just leaves their birth certificate lying around? Huh? What the fuck, Ezekiel? Wait a second. Oh my God! It says you were born in South Carolina. Your fucking grandmother. You said you lived with your grandmother in South Carolina. It wasn't a lie. I was in Mexico for a while. What the fuck? You've been pretending to be someone of another... You told me you... I was one of them. You are the worst type of human being. You are the worst... Like, do you even have any relatives that have anything to do with anything related to Mexico or Spain? I don't even understand what's going on. So, Nick, you spent so much time with him in Mexico, right? I mean, that's 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 what happened. Yeah. I thought you yeah, guys escaped. we spent escaped. so much time in prison together. What? What's going on? I'm sorry, Nick. I just, you just thought I was Mexican and I just kind of stuck with it. And, and then we came back and you just kept calling me your Mexican friend. Just, I didn't know how to tell you. You disgust me, Emmanuel. I mean, Ezekiel or whatever the fuck your actual name is. I can't believe you've lied to us this whole time. I put my life in your hands. We were in prison together. I trusted you. I gave you my butt. And you did this to me? You. You are sick and disgusting, you fucking piece of filth. You're a liar, and you betrayed not just me, but all of us? For what? For what? Hmm? What were you even doing there? I'm sorry, it was a student trip. I just wanted to buy some pot, and I kept going south before I knew what I was in prison. Trafficking? No, just for myself. You. You were just filth. I'm sorry, Nick. How could you do this to me? <laughs> I meant everything I said. It doesn't mean anything now. It was all a lie. No, Nick. Not my love for you. Well, just like all those telenovelas we cried together do, this is over after one season. I'm sorry. It's not good enough. You know what? I can't stand being around you anymore. Go on! Leave! Leave this group! Yeah! I'm glad that I never said that uh, he was our intern. I always said that he was was your intern, Nick, and... I just, uh, well... I need to vet better next time I hire. Yeah. I might even have to pay them next time. Oh, God. I don't, I don't know if you want to go... Yeah, I don't, quite, I don't quite. think we need to go that far. You're right. My presence is reward enough, and someone just didn't appreciate it. That does it for another episode of 30 Minutes of Mayhem. Uh, 
Yeah, so I've been your host. My name is Michael Mayhew, and I have been here with my co-hosts. Greg and Nick. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, all those different locations, and uh, donate to us on PayPal using 30 minutes of mayhem at gmail.com, and uh, I really hope that you've enjoyed this episode. And uh, later, fellas. <laughs>